In today's episode, we're going to be covering what Mosca's theorem is all about. So if you want to learn more about that, let's dive into today's episode. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the QRL Show, the place where you come for the crypto and stay for the quantum. On today's episode, myself and Michael Strike from the team are going to be talking about Mosca's theorem. First, going to cover off what is Mosca's theorem, who is Michele Mosca, and just try to give you a resource in terms of what the theorem is and more. So by the end of this video, you're going to know just that. Michael, I'm looking forward to having this short episode where we kind of cover uh, this, this theorem that you hear of within you know the circles that we run within. Yeah, absolutely. We'll keep this relatively short and quick. Just a quick gre uh, greetings out to YouTube community, the crypto community, the quantum community, and our intrepid Discord communities. Before we touch on Mosca's theorem, I'm quickly going to cover who is Michele Mosca. In short, Mosca received his PhD in mathematics from Oxford in the late 90s in quantum computer algorithms. He started Waterloo's efforts in quantum computing, and he was the co-founder of the Institute for Quantum Computing at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada. Mosca has made major contributions in the theory and practice of quantum information processing, particularly in the areas of quantum algorithms, techniques for studying the limitations of quantum computers, quantum self-testing, and private quantum channels. He's received numerous awards and honors for his work and is a sought-after speaker, giving talks at various international conferences around the world, including the World Economic Forum. His current research interest includes quantum computation, cryptographic tools designed to be safe against quantum tech, and software tools for quantum information processing system. And lastly, he is globally recognized for his drive to help academia, industry, and government prepare our cyber systems to be safe in an era with quantum computers. Now that you have some more context on who Michele Mosca is, let's dive more into Mosca's theorem and how it all ties together. If you're new to quantum cryptography, Here's one of the, the biggest hurdles. You come across a lot of different different esoteric technologies and phrases, decoherence, qubits, systemic noise, dilution refrigerators. All of these things are really, really confusing. It's difficult to quantify all of that, all of those different areas of science into something subjective in your head that you can make sense of. So here's why I like this theorem is because it, you don't have to understand the in, any of the intricacies. You don't have to understand all of the stuff that's beneath the surface that you can see that's happening on the news or uh, wherever you get your information from. You can, you can just kind of speculate yourself and then put it into essentially just ask yourself three questions. And, and this is how easy it is. So the theorem goes as such. How long do you need your encrypted data to be secure? How long will it take to implement a quantum secure solution into your current infrastructure? How long will it take to develop a large scale quantum computer or any other significant development that might pose a post quantum threat to your data? If the first one plus the second one is greater than the third one, then worry. So if X plus Y is greater than Z, then you have to start worrying now. And essentially what this does is it addresses the store now decrypt later, which I think is quite relatively unexplored in the industry of uh, CISO departments uh, in InfoSec. Maybe not completely ignored. I'm starting to hear some buzzwords on that, but certainly governments are governments that need certain data that's classified at you know, top secret levels needs to be secure for years, decades, uh, if not more, potentially. Those need to be like p certainly pulse quantum secure stored now, if it's be it cold, cold storage or if it's if, or if the data is in flight. But really, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. 